Hello, everyone. Good to be here. Um, my name is Anita Ihima, and I'm joining this call from Nigeria. Today, I'll be speaking on the topic Solving the Savage Mesh Adopters Dilemma. And during this session, I'll be answering some of the questions that um, adopters frequently ask, and as well as giving you an in detail of what savage measures are actually about. Well, let's get to it. During this section, we're going to look at an introduction, a quick introduction, then getting started with savage measures, then we'll talk about the functionalities of the savage measures, why um, we should adopt the savage measures, or why people actually adopt the savage measures. We'll talk about the savage mesh architectures, then the savage mesh abstractions that exist, we we'll look at the developers or the service mesh adopters dilemma. And finally, we're going to look at the service mesh management claim called mesh rate. A little bit about me. I am Anita E. Human, a software developer, and um, the mesh at the layer five community, a developer advocate at Kibano, a technical writer, and an open source advocate. Now let's get to the topic of today, right? What are savage meshes? The first question every single adopter would want to ask. But savage meshes in the layman's terms are simply a way to control how different parts of an application or microservices um, communicate or share data with one another. They're otherwise considered as um, a microservice platform, which is true. And if you're familiar with microservices, you might be wondering, service meshes, um, microservices on their own are able to deal with the service-to-service -service communication that goes on within, within them. So why exactly do we need these um, service meshes in the first place? Well, the answer is simple. It is very possible to code the logic that um, governs the communication between each of these services without the use of a service mesh layer. But in a situation where the communication starts becoming more complex over, over the day or as time goes by, then the need for the service mesh starts becoming more valuable. Um, what happens in a service mesh is the service mesh takes the logic that governs logic governing the service to service communication out of an individual service and abstracts it to a layer of infrastructure. And so every service mesh or every mesh is a dedicated layer for a service-to-service -service communication. For cloud-native applications that are built on microservice architecture, service meshes are a way to comprise a large number of discrete services into a functional application. And the good thing is you do not have to run a microservice application before you can actually use this service meshes. Although you have higher chances of benefiting from a service mesh when you run more services. Over 85% of applications that use microservices are currently using service meshes to manage their microservices. And that is to tell you how important the need for microservice meshes is becoming as the day goes by. Well, now let's look at the functionalities of the service meshes, right? People adopt service meshes for countless number of reasons, but it's often as a result of the use cases they're looking to benefit from. And um, some of the capabilities that people frequently look out for in a service meshes or people deploy a service meshes for are uh, one, the observability. Using services, you can use the service meshes, you can generate all kinds of traces logs and metrics. You can also ingest this into um, your monitoring system of choice to get a value without instru instrumenting your application. This is one of the very, very important capabilities that um, adopters frequently look out for because you can handle the consistent metrics across the fleet. You can trace the flow of requests across the service 
across the services, and you can also deal with the metrics without instrumenting the applications. Another important capability is the security. Of course, the central the central of service mesh concept is identity, and so every service mesh owns a unique ID that they identified with. And with these IDs, you, you can use them to facilitate a secure connection between the service to service communication that goes on in your application. And another very useful functionality to look out for is the traffic control. When you lay down proxies and are able to control configuration and direct the traffic, you realize that there's so much that you can actually use with um, use the service measures to achieve. And this includes the traffic steering, traffic splitting, ingress and express routing. Another very useful capability that people frequently look out for is the resilience, the control of overkills. Of course, you will be able to do so much with them. Um, so much of um, chaos engineering with the use of service meshes. You can configure the mesh to provide a bunch of resilience to your service, and you can even add retries for your field requests. And with the use of the service meshes, you can handle the time out, the systemic, systematic port injections. You can control the connection pool size as well as the request load. You can handle the circuit breakers and the health checkers within your application. And these are all the capabilities that people frequently look out for when they use the service meshes. Now let's look at why they actually adopt the service meshes. The answer still comes down to the use cases that they're looking out for when they're adopting a service mesh. But it's often to avoid the bloated service code, to avoid duplicating work to make service production ready, and this can be seen in load balancing, auto scaling, rate limiting traffic and routing, and also to handle, to avoid inconsistency across the services. That includes the retries, the failovers, deadlines, consolidation, and so many others. And also to handle the diffusing, the diffusing responsibility of the service mesh of the service management as well. Another very important reason why people adopt these service measures is to help with modernization. With the use of these service measures, you can modernize your IT inventory without writing your application. You can adopt microservices and also use your regular services and that is perfectly fine. Like I said earlier, you can actually use this um, service meshes without running your application on the microservice. And you can also adopt new frameworks that are arising while you build your application. And finally, you also get to move to the cloud. Of course, the introduction of the cloud has made the has made the um, development process a lot easier and made speed and uh, has sped up everything when it comes to the production. So all of this saves the developers so much time and improves the developer speed, which is another very important uh, reason why people would want or why you would want to adopt a service mesh. Now let's move on to look at the service mesh architecture. The service mesh architecture is divided into three layers. The first, which is um, the data plane, and this layer is considered the work of the service mesh. This is where all of the service proxies are logically grouped and they are responsible for a lot of um, purposes, such as um, executing of traffic control, health checking, routing, load balancing auto scaling, authori authorization, observability, and so on. Now moving on to the second um, layer, which is the control plane. This is where an operation interface with the service mesh. It deals with speaking of um, speaking to the proxies and updating the configuration for a given service mesh. So in the control plane, you should be able to see that your service mesh will provide policies, configuration, and as well as platform integration. It takes a set of isolated stateless sidecast proxies 
and turns them into a service mesh. And also, it does not touch any packet requests into the data pad. And finally, the last um, layer, which is called the management plane. This is the layer at the top, which helps to federate the service mesh deployment. This, um, the management plane helps to perform a lot of things that you would most likely not expect from the control plane. And these include um, providing the federation, the backend system integration, expanding policies and governance, continuous delivery, integration, workflow, chaos engineering, application performance, and so many more. And much later into this, we're going to look at the service mesh management plane called Meshway, which enables operators, developers, and service mesh owners to realize the full potential of the service mesh. Of course, with service mesh comes the abstractions to the rescue. And some of the abstractions that exist within the service mesh are the service mesh interface, which is a standard interface for service mesh on Kubernetes, then the service mesh performance, a format for describing and capturing the service mesh performance, and then the multi-vendor service mesh interoperation, which is a set of API standards for enabling the service mesh federation. So all of these three abstractions are the underlying project as satellites, as underlying project that satellites the mesh or this um, service mesh project is so. Most of these projects, like the service mesh interface and service mesh performance, are also mesh uh, project that satellites the mesh project in the layer five community. Now you can see. Uh, quick uh, view of what the service mesh performance looks like. If you want to know more about the service mesh performance, I suggest you check out the links provided on this slide, which I'll provide the link to much later, and um, you will understand all about the service mesh performance. This is actually one of the projects recently adopted by the CNCF. And then you can also see an, a quick a quick view of the service mesh interface as well. All right. Now moving forward, we're going to be looking at the adopter's dilemma. As an adopter or as someone who is new to service meshes, you must have tons of questions, which of course I did when I got introduced or when I, I newly heard of service meshes. And I always ask, which service mesh is actually the best for an organization? Because since there are like numerous um, service meshes out there, how does one get started with the service meshes? And then what is the cash using the service meshes? And all of these questions. And uh, there are over 20 different service meshes. And uh, within the layer five project, within the layer five community, we have a project that curates the landscape of these different service meshes and their related technologies. And so on this landscape project, you're going to see that it allows you to uh, compare which service mesh is a better option for you or organization and uh, which has more capabilities to help you in one way or another while you're um, using your service meshes, of course. And also it helps you to understand which would be the best fit while running your microservice applications. And if you'd want to find out more about this landscape project, then you can look at the layer five projects at layer five website at layer5.io slash landscape, and you get answers to most of the adopters questions that you're probably asking right now. Now moving on, let's look at the service mesh management plane called mesh. But before we do that, let's look at the organization behind this project Meshri. Meshri is a project that is built by the Layer 5 community. Layer 5 is an organization, it's a community that offers cloud native management softwares that exploits the unique positions service meshes have in changing how developers write applications, how operators run modern infrastructures, and how service mesh owners 
are able to manage their own SaaS operation. And then with tools from cloud native infrastructure and the application, Layer 5 has empowered a lot of developers, operators, and service mesh owners. Layer 5 Community Stewards, three cloud native foundation projects, shares network and service mesh groups within the CNCF. And it's one of um, one of my favorite open source community, of course. One of the popular projects within the Layer 5 community is the Meshri, which is considered the service mesh management plane. Meshri is the largest open source project that exists within the Layer 5 community. And within the Meshri project, there are a few projects that also satellite this project, and some of them are extensions, whereas Others are actually stand-alone projects. Some of these projects are already donated to the CNCF, as you can see, or like I mentioned earlier, we have the service mesh patterns, service mesh performance, and service mesh interface, and so on. As well as mesh itself are all projects that are currently donated to the CNCF. These projects are built Measuring has participated in quite a number of um, um, internship programs, and some of which are the season, Google Season of Doc, the Google Summer of Code, the Linus Foundation Mentorship Program, the Core Infrastructure Initiative, and as well, it's a project under the CNCF, which has um, sub satellite projects such as the Service Mesh Performance and Service Mesh interface. Meshri is simply the multi-mesh management platform that handles the life cycles, the workloads, the performance, the configurations, the patterns, practices, skills, and filters within your application. And it has the pro this project already has quite a number of adopters and supporters, most of which are looking to incorporate Meshri into their release process in order to measure the adherence to service mesh standards. Some of the adopters that Meshri has are the HashiCorp console, the network service, service mesh, we have the Opterrain, we have LinkedIn, -E and so many others. This is a picture description of what the uh, meshry architecture looks like. You can see that it actually does so much for your application and handles all of the service mesh management that goes on from the life cycle down to the workloads and the configurations and deals with the patterns and so many others. So all of this are what goes on within the meshry um, project If you want to join the Meshri community, you are so much welcome to actually jump on this. It is a warm, welcoming community. And um, this project, the Meshri project, along with all its sub projects, are built within the Layer 5 community. And um, the Layer 5 community has already engineered, has engineers from different organizations such as Intel, Red Hat, Rackspace. HashiCorp, maintainers, and so many others from different open source organizations. And their five community, particularly Meshri, runs as number one most popular Linux Foundation mentorship project. Layer 5 is an open source community that looks out for the sustainable open source governance and not just open source contributions. We have over 300 contributors or 15 maintainers across different organizations. And um, so far, we've had over 1,000 mesh users and um, six, over 600 followers, 1,000, over 1,000 stars on our GitHub repositories. And of course, our Slack channel has over 2,000 um, Slack community, members of the Slack community. Within the Layer 5 community, we have a project called the 
matchmaking program, which helps, which um, highlights members of, of the organization of the community to help mentor and onboard others that are coming into the project. And uh, of course, we are, have been highlighted as the, the number one most popular um, project on the Linux Foundation Mentorship Program. There's actually so much going on within this community. Aside the projects, um, aside the service mesh projects that are run, we also have a community of supporting where we support each other to grow and um, grow together as one community. Thank you so much for your time and thank you for listening. If you have any questions for me right now about service meshes and all that I've said in this section, please do well to go on and ask. You can also connect with me via Twitter or GitHub or LinkedIn. And if you'd want to join this awesome community, Player Pipe community that represents Meshery, you can as well do that by jumping on the links provided and you find out more about this particular project and community. I hope this section has enlightened you one way or the other about service meshes and um, how you can handle your adopt your issues as an adopter or your challenges as an adopter who is new into the service mesh ecosystem. Thank you so much for your time and um, have a nice day.